mental health. I'm gonna tell you tonight why you have mental health problems in the Muslim community. Why there's a mental health crisis in the Muslim community. If at any point in your life, you've struggled with any mental health issue, if you've struggled with anxiety, if you've struggled with panic disorder, if you've struggled with depression, if you've struggled with bipolar depression, if you've struggled with manic depressive disorders, I'm gonna tell you exactly why you've gone through this. It's because you're not a good Muslim. It's because you're not a good Muslim. The reason why you have anxiety and depression is because you don't pray enough. It's because you don't read enough Quran. It's because you don't have enough Iman and trust and tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, your mental health is directly correlated to your faith. And you don't have enough to overcome your mental illness. The amount of times that I've heard that has sickened me to my very core. As someone who studied psychology, counseling, trauma therapy, as someone who's been a counselor for the past, and therapist, and life coach, whatever you wanna call it, for the past four years, and I've seen over 3,000 Muslim clients, alhamdulillah, I know that that correlation is garbage. The majority of the time. Why? Because I have so many people who come to me. Brother Yusha, I'm doing everything I can. I am praying five times a day. I am praying my sunnah. I am fasting Mondays and Wednesdays, the white days. I'm giving in charity. I'm reading as much of the Quran as I can. But I cannot overcome this deep darkness that is enveloped my spirit, my soul, my brain. I cannot overcome the anxiety that's causing me tremendous amount of stress. I cannot overcome the panic attacks that are coming left, right, and center. I cannot overcome the manic depressive disorder that leads me one day I'm okay and I'm on a high, the next day I'm on a low and I feel like life is just not even worth getting out of bed in the morning. And I understand that because I've been there. I've been there. I've been diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. I've been diagnosed with panic disorder. There have been times where I have been traveling, giving da'wah, helping other people come to Islam, giving shahadas on stage, praying in the middle of the night, fasting as much as I can, reading the Quran until my eyes hurt. And yet I couldn't escape the anxiety. I couldn't escape the trauma. I couldn't escape the manic depressive disorders that would come from nowhere. Why? Because it wasn't because I lacked any faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though there is some correlation in the reverse. Allah says those who leave off his remembrance, those who distance themselves from Allah, Allah will give them a miserable life. So yes, if your deen is in terrible disorder, your life will be in terrible disorder. And Allah does say those who remember Allah, in the remembrance of Allah, the heart will find rest. But sometimes that rest is just enough to keep you from wanting to end your own life. Sometimes that sakina and that rest is just enough for you to get out of bed the next morning when you see no other reason to do so. Your faith and your mental health are not always directly correlated. Sometimes there are issues that need to be uncovered. Sometimes you were abused as a child. Sometimes you were abused by a spouse or a partner. Sometimes you witnessed things that cause post-traumatic stress disorder that are not going to be fixed by Ruqiyah. They're not going to be fixed just by picking up the Quran. Yes, it will help. It will be a band-aid. It will help you get through one day till the next. But until you dig deep inside your soul, until you dig deep inside of your brain, and figure out what it is that is causing this distress, what is causing this trauma, and you deal with it at its core, it will continue to be a fight alongside of your faith.